Hello artists. Good morning. It's a little bit early. Uh, the sun's not quite shining in, so hopefully we have enough light to show you what's happened here. Um, the painting portion of this, I have the video for, and I'll show you that in the next video. I wanted to show you the sketch, of course, of how I made this elephant in the room, but unfortunately uh, that did not get filmed, so I'm kind of having to redo the sketch portion of this for you, which will actually give me a chance to um, talk about how I put him in this room with a little bit of uh, perspective, although my perspective is not correct on this uh, necessarily. It, well, it's not bad. It's honestly not too bad, uh, but um, we're going to make the little room here first. Let me talk here real quick too because the border part didn't get shown, I don't think. Uh, the underneath color that I put on here was a mixture of, I was going for eggplant, so it's a mixture of a kind of a deep violet color and one of these orangey colors and I put them next to each other. I didn't, I didn't mix them all the way, I put them next to each other. Then the next thing that I did was I put a layer of purple violet paint over the top of it kind of a light wash and I squirted it with my water bottle and I picked up the water drops so I have a very similar texture all the way through here and if I do still have that on film you'll see it um, you know in the next video where I'm starting to paint but I don't think I have that portion because I did it with the sketch and the sketch didn't get recorded um, so this is just regular white gesso I'm, I'm trying not to do 15 layers again. <laughs> I want to minimize that. So I just did the outer border and then I'll do the room here in a good contrasting color um, that's not too bold, but that will, you know, make it feel like it's a room. Okay, how did I sketch out this elephant in the room? So that border is basically a one inch border it's the width of my Winston Princeton, my Princeton synthetic paintbrush. So that made it pretty darn easy to kind of get that rough border. Now, we're going to choose a point right out here. Um, yeah. Okay. We're going to draw a parallel line for the wall. Actually, we're not. What we're going to do is we're going to um, kind of draw our ceiling in here. We're just taking that point and kind of any random point over here. And then we're going to take this point here and I'm not going to the very edges because I want to have some floor space and some ceiling space. So these do not need to be equal where they're go, you know, where they're coming down from. We're going to take that one down here just a little bit. But this is about an inch and a half in. Then we're going to make this line about an inch and a half in. What you do want to do is have this one be a parallel line. So I'm just still kind of eyeballing it, but. Um, we need to have kind of a straight line from here to here. See? So that's going back to that vanishing point right there. This is a one point perspective. So again, this line is parallel with our, our um, board. And it should be, you know, fairly parallel to our, our border line there, okay? So we're going here directly across, and then we're gonna go here directly across for our ceiling. Boop. Okay, ta-da, there you have a room. You do, it's just that easy. Okay, so then I made a little TV. So all points, all lines have to go back to that point because we're doing one point perspective. So 
our little floor lines. Let's go and put our floor in here first. Now you can measure these by going along this back line and doing them, you know, like a, a half inch apart. And then you would get very even lines going back to your vanishing point. But I just decided uh, to have, you know, kind of these, these boards on the floor. If you wanted to do a window, you would still bring the top lines down to here and then you would do a parallel line to do the window. Anything that's in this back square is going to be parallel, not going to the vanishing point. This is essentially our horizon line. Now it's a little confusing. There's some extra terms in there. Um, again, I do have a, a one point and two point perspective over on Patreon, um, which I'll probably release here on YouTube in a few months. I'm not sure. You know, that's kind of something that is a special extra little bits of knowledge. Okay. So there we have all of our floorboards are going to our vanishing point. If you had a window here and you had anything outside of that window, all of those lines would still go to that vanishing point. This is one point perspective. Pretty cool. Actually, I'm sorry, this is not your horizon line. Your horizon line is where your vanishing point is placed on. Okay, so our horizon line is actually right there. So everything above it will be coming down and anything below it will be going up. It's, it's hard to explain perspective in three minutes or less. I'm not gonna lie. Okay, so for, I just kind of freehanded a sketch of the little TV. Um, yeah, I'm gonna go freehand from here, but that's, I just wanted to show you real quick, that's how you make a room. And then you can put anything else you want to in there. But um, essentially our TV, the bottom of our TV is gonna go, you know, we're gonna have the front of the TV here. Parallel. And then we've got the bottom of the TV. And then we've got the top of the TV. And again, it's going parallel to that line. And that way we just made it come out from the door. And then this is parallel to the bottom and to the top. And then this is parallel to the back of the wall. And then this one actually follows back to that horizon line. And then I just put some fun little legs on it. But you see, it even helps with placement of the legs because they all kind of need to be in that same box shape. And then I made it into an old fashioned TV. And put some rabbit ears on it. Now those ended up getting covered with our elephant because our elephant got very large because it's the elephant in the room and should be the largest thing. Then I drew in my chair and the chair is just kind of this basic shape. Again, we're going parallel to the floorboard or to the, you know, to that line, to that line. And we're going, um, let's see. I went up from here and then kind of had his back here. Chairs are pretty simple to make. Okay. So just kind of a box shape actually and then a rectangle that comes off of that now for our elephant i want him to feel like he's really big in this space so i broke the border with his little body i, I pushed the boundary let's see if i can do this again okay 
He wasn't necessarily easy to sketch out. We want him to feel like he's really looming in the room. So elephants have kind of a very triangular shaped face. Yeah, do you hear them out there, Oz? Okay, and then we're gonna bring off their ears, his ears to here. And yes, it does cover up part of the TV, but the ears are important. And then we're gonna bring this ear up to here. And then bringing his little behind kind of squished in this chair. And then having these big old legs coming down. So I actually broke that border there also. I had a little tail coming out. So you could even make his head a little bit bigger. I think I made his head bigger. There's the eyes. And kind of have a brow bone. And the brow bone here. All right. So then we gotta have him have some tusks. Here we gotta have some tusks. And then here, I just kind of did this to get kind of this trunk shape. Okay. So then I actually had him put one arm out, leaning against the TV and their limbs are very, you know, cylindrical shaped. So, you know, it's hard to tell that it's a TV even back there. I'm just trying to do some quick shading for you guys. So you can see there's a little shape in there. And then I put a big belly on him. And then I really wanted him to feel squishy, so he's gonna get some extra little lines in here. And we're gonna pull in his leg and have that kind of sitting on the ground here. And um, kind of doing kind of this little thing with that. And um, then we're bringing in his second leg here. You know, he's got toes. He'll have toes in the painting when it's done. And we got his big belly. And then um, I brought in his other arm kind of straight down from here, kind of sitting on his knee. And so I brought out his knee a little bit more, I guess. Not easy to recreate, that's for sure. It's like, what did I do? What did I do here? Okay getting a little bit better idea of where he's at, placed at in here. And remember guys, uh, before you go into your book or into your, um, onto your board, whatever substrate you're using, remember this just doesn't have to be just in an altered book. And even in an altered book though, this would be, you know, super cool. Um, you know, it's good to practice it and kind of sketch it out before you go on to your final product. Just because you're working in an altered book doesn't mean that um, a little thumbnail wouldn't help you because it most certainly, certainly does help you get your placement of all of your little guys and you know what you're doing, what you're making. 
I think, um, you know, sketching is underrated uh, by far, and I don't do enough of it. And uh, it's uh, good to it's good to warm up and practice with a sketch. You know, it's really good to just kind of get your thoughts down, especially when we're doing illustrations like this. You know, I think it's really helpful to get. Uh, your thoughts in order about how you want your piece to look. Seen here from those brow bones, look how that's just kind of automatically coming together for our elephant. He's gonna have kind of these indents where those things will come out of his trunk. And then of course this is all shaded in here because this is his body. So there we go. There is our elephant in the room. And, you know, you could put some flowers on the chair, which I might do. Depends on how busy it gets. So sometimes if you get too busy, um, you need to really make your other elements sit back in the background a little bit. But I think it'd be kind of funny. You know, he's going to have wrinkles, which we'll get to that when we're painting, of course. But, you know, if you're just sketching for fun of it, put in all of his wrinkles. Oh my goodness. And then of course we can go through and, and paint all of this too. But there is our quick sketch of the elephant in the room. You can put his ear in front or back. I have chosen to put it in front. And uh, again, he's going to have toes. I was trying to get him to lean up against this. At one point I was like, oh, it'd be really cute if he had a cup of coffee in his in his arm, you know, or, you know, on his hand. I just couldn't quite fit it all in there. You know, all the different ideas that I had. I think it'd be pretty appropriate to have, you know, the elephant in the room just kind of sitting there watching and waiting. But as they tend to do, right? Okay, so that is your quick sketch for our elephant. I keep saying it as elephant because that's Lord of the Rings, Sam Goodwin, Goodwise. Yeah, what was his name? I think it was Goodwise. But, okay, so there's our sketch. And then next video, you'll see me start to paint. So, yeah, sorry that the original sketch didn't um, pan out or that I didn't hit the record button properly. And, but, uh, you know, I, I did get a chance to kind of go through the perspective of the room with you a little bit better than what I normally would. So it's probably good to kind of break it up this way. All right, guys, please, please, please leave a comment. Please hit the like button if you can. And uh, we will see you all next video. All right. Have a great day. Chat soon. Love you. Bye.